Hello everyone, this is Gary and today we're looking at six at Port Miriam. Now I know what you're gonna say, what on earth is all that about? Why is it six at Port Miriam? Well, the short answer is, it is very difficult to talk about Port Miriam without mentioning that TV series. What TV series you may ask? Well, this TV series. Yes, you are right, we are talking about the TV series known as The Prisoner. It was a 1967 uh, TV series, now a cult TV series. It was British, it was surreal, it's been described as avant-garde, and it's about an intelligence agent who resigns and then is kidnapped. He's imprisoned in a village at a secret location, but just between you and me, the secret location is Port Mirian, and he was designated as a number six instead of a name. He was called number six. And the catchphrase that came out of that was, he was not a number, he was a free man, apparently. So, listen to this. I am not a number, I am a free man. So, there you have it. He is not a number, he is a free man. And I'm sure we would all like to say the same, maybe. Now, I could try and unravel the meaning of that TV series for you. Hmm? I could talk about a riddle wrapped in an enigma. Um, it's got allegory, it's got metaphor, political and otherwise. It's got psychology, it's got spy drama, and it's got surrealism. But to be honest, there are plenty of YouTube videos and websites out there, even clubs and organizations who make a much better job of it than I ever would. No, no, no. I want to talk about Port Mirian, the village, its background, the buildings, the architecture, and inevitably, number six will come into it because the two are deeply entwined. It was a single TV series, 17 episodes, filmed between 1966 and 1968. Uh, and it was filmed with external location, yes, you've guessed it, external location filming in Port Mirian Wells. So I hope that gives you a flavor and it gives you what they wanted in the TV series. And what did they want? What do you want? Information. Yes, that's right, they wanted information, and that's what I'm going to be giving to you. Although it may not actually be the same information as they wanted in the TV series, but no matter. The information I'm going to give you is going to be a little bit about Port Mirian, the village in Wales, uh, a bit about its architecture, its background and its history, and to encourage you, if you are in the area, to make time to take a stop and to visit it. So. Anyway, let's just get into it. Okay, so Port Mirian Wells. Some general information first because that's most important to get the background. It starts and ends with Sir Clough Williams Ellis, Port Mirian's architect who acquired, who bought the area in about 1925 with the intention of designing and building a coastal village, something he in fact achieved spectacularly. Now the architectural style is that of a Mediterranean Italian village. It was designed and constructed between 1925 and 1975, but I would suggest it probably has two clear phases. The first one was between 1925 and 1939 when there was some broad planning and some key buildings developed. And then from 1954 to 1975 there was much more detailed construction. Some of the most fascinating elements of it for me is the way in which the architect has incorporated a bits of other demolished or defunct buildings that were of significance architecturally or otherwise and those buildings and structures and works are incorporated into the coastal village as a whole. There works by other architects, but he has given them very much that Port Mirian flavor. So then, 
let's have him gone from the background look at some of the more detail of the buildings as we go on a walk through the coastal village of Port Mirian. Okay, looking then at some of the key buildings, the first one I would identify is the one you come to as you start your walk through Port Mirian, and that's the Gatehouse. It's a pink building with an arch, beautifully baroque style murals, and a painted ceiling, which I've shown in the pictures behind me. Um, the second building, which is the most striking as well as you go into the village, is the Bell Tower, which was constructed in about 1928. And that gives an architectural reference to uh, the Italian villages like Portofino. And it features heavily in that TV series again. Anyway, onward past the bell tower, which featured in that TV series, uh, the next three key buildings I would identify would be the Pantheon or Dome, uh, built in about 1960 and now a listed grade two building. The second one is the Piazza, which again was built in about 1965, a listed grade two building from 1971 onwards, because that takes central stage. It's the most noticeable feature of the coastal village. Well worth spending some time at uh, looking around at all the various buildings you can see from the Piazza and the character and flavor that it gives to the coastal village as a whole. The third uh, key building that I would identify in this middle section, as it were, is the Bristol Colonnade, because that's an example of a relocated piece. It was built in about 1760, rescued and rebuilt in about 1959, formerly an ancient monument, um, and it was rebuilt as a giant jigsaw, transported and reassembled in the location in which you now see it in Port Miriam. Now that's a good point at which to pause, have a look at some more video before we move on to the next uh, collection of key buildings. Okay, so once you have been uh, to the piazza and you're about to go on to the next stage, I would identify three key areas to look at. The first one would be the Hercules statue and bandstand, constructed in about 1960. The second would be the town hall, built in 1937, listed in 1971, because it is a pastiche of Jacobean pieces from Emerald Hall, which was about to be demolished and thankfully was uh, bought at auction by the architect and relocated in pieces and reconstructed into the town hall that you see uh, today. The third uh, building or area is the quayside and the Amis Reunis. Now, the Amis Reunis looks like a ship, but it's not a ship. Well, it was a ship, but it was salvaged from wreckage um, left after a heavy gale. Now you can walk along the sea's edge past the hotel, originally uh, past what was the mansion house, but is now a listed grade two hotel. And that in itself is a walk, but which is enjoyable um, all on its own, even if you weren't at Port Marion, but is all part of that overall feel of Port Marion as a coastal uh, village. So those broadly are the areas I would identify that you should have a look, but that leaves us with one big enigmatic question. And that is this, is Port Mirian the prisoner? Or is the prisoner Port Mirian? Okay, so that was six at Port Mirian. And I hope you've enjoyed that very brief tour of some of the key features of uh, Port Mirian. Um, and I hope you can see how very difficult it is to uh, disentangle the prisoner and Port Merion. Indeed, they each deserve each other and are natural complements to some extent. Now, if you like this video, please mark it as a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, 
well then please subscribe. Apart from that, all that is left for me to say is thank you for taking the time to watch this video and bye for now.